in this video I chat to Ollie, aka DJ producer Gorp, uh, about his studio Most Wanted Audio. I get his five tips for producers. We talk about mastering and how to finish music. Let's jump in. Hey, it's Graham Farmer from Deck Transmission, and today I go in depth with Ollie, aka Gorp, about his studio, Most Wanted Audio. We chat about we chat about his five things producers need to know. We chat about um, tips that he gives for mastering and getting your tracks ready for mastering. And we also to give these tips for finishing music. And so it's full. Pack, this video is packed full of information. I hope you enjoy it. Let's jump in and chat to Gorp. Let's talk about production. And let's talk about you. Obviously, have your most wanted audio. So let's talk. Let's talk about that for a start. Tell us about your studio. Yeah, well, it's um, well, my studio is like my uh, it's like my mecca. It's uh, everything from uh, yeah, th uh, equipment I've owned for like twenty years to something I bought last week. You know, it's uh, it, it's like an ongoing progression of uh, of the evolution of technology and me and uh, yeah, my passion. So, do you have a favourite? Um, yes, um, I have the Moog Voyager. That's my favorite piece of equipment. Yeah, that's that's that. I always tell people that's coming with me. It's going in my coffin when I go. <laughs> so, yeah. Nice. Yeah, no, that's that's yeah, that's my favorite bit. But yeah, no, my my studios. Um, it's obviously evolved over the years because when you first start out, you uh, you start off with bare minimal. You know, yeah, I, I you know I had nothing but. Um, and another thing is, which we'll probably talk about later, is you don't need all this stuff. <laughs> it's just it just really helps sometimes. So. What was the first thing you bought? The first thing I bought was a, a thing called a Yamaha R1MX. So it was meant to be like remix, really cool. But it's it's like a, a drum machine sequencer thing. Yeah, that I bought that from eBay. I didn't even know what it did, how it works, or anything. I just thought oh, that looks really cool. I want to be a producer and stuff. So I bought it and. Yeah, it was just full of sub menus. Like you had to hold that button, press that button, turn this button, read that, do this, and I was just like, I can't use this. I don't even know what I'm doing with it. So <laughs> yeah, I just saw, I just probably I sold it on very very shortly after. But um, I like a lot of equipment that people <laughs> buy. It's like, oh, that looks cool. Yeah, I don't know how to use it. <laughs> do you find that you play with it and then sell it if you if it doesn't work with you? Um, yeah, I kind of. I, that's one thing I've learned. If it slows my flow down with anything. You know, in the music world, it's the, the last thing you want is things slowing you down. Um, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's. Um, I spend most of my life in here. That's probably why I look a bit pale because there's no windows <laughs> and we're, we're below sub level. So it's. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's let's jump into knowledge. Uh, what five things do producers need to know? Five things that producers need to know. Well, uh yeah, this is very subjective. It's 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 like um, these are the things that I would um, tell someone. Exactly. Um, yeah, things that that I would probably, if I was to tell myself, I should listen to myself, right? So, uh, five things. So, right, let's go. Um, one, one thing. Yeah, number one. Um, the the biggest thing for me is not to overthink anything, right? So. For me personally, for years, I was always trying to fit in a bracket. I was trying to sound like somebody. I was trying to like, well, not look like somebody, but I was trying to like, just be, you know, fit in that type of thing. I was worried about what anyone said, if they like this, if they like that music, if they like, and I'd be like, and then the moment I just thought, I'm not listening anymore. I don't care about anyone else or it's all going out the window, you know? And, and then everything just fell in place after that because it was, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's kind of that. So I guess that'd be have to be number one. Um, hey, that's great. Number two. So number two is uh, limit yourself on uh, your equipment. Limit yourself on your samples. Limit yourself on uh, your plugins. Those kind of things. Um, I won't say limit yourself, but kind of keep it in a a smaller area. You know, it's like it's like having a you know it's like having a library with ten thousand books. You're just gonna skim over them all and go, oh yeah, I think I've uh, I've got that, uh, and you you won't get any red. Whereas if you've yes. got three or four books, you know, read them from front to back, and you'll know everything about them. It's the same with like plugins. It's the same with samples and everything else. So number three, um, number three would be 
Um, I watched that interview with you and D Ramirez the other day, actually. So I, I, I'm trying to swerve all the, the answers he gave because they were really good. Um, yeah, they were really good, those ones. Uh, number three would be um, try and find somebody that you're a friend or um, someone you might be doing a course with or something uh, you might be at college with. Try and find someone to collaborate with in your area you know, and, and teach each other because you'll learn things like while, while you're away learning something, they're learning something, you'll, you'll sort of put ideas together and you'll grow together as a producer. So it'll be a good way of sort of sharing knowledge and, and you know, advice as well together. Um, that's, you know, you might say, oh, don't do that because of this or try this, it might do this. And then you just kind of like the next thing you evolve together because you, you almost have a bit of competition as well because someone's working on something, another person. And now with the internet and the, the remote working it's it's great you can do it over that and you you both grow as artists together you know and it's a uh, it's a good way of uh you know rather than being isolated on your own just in a room sort of sat there thinking you know everything you know? yeah i think it's great for the like these times as well like we can just sit and collab with somebody locked down then it's yeah it's amazing yeah yeah so what was that uh, piece of kit you were telling me about earlier as well for, for remote work and that looks amazing oh that um it's called squadron yeah, apparently it's. Uh, I've I've used it. Um, I used it the other day. Actually, it worked really well. Uh, the the amazing thing about it is um, it's it's pretty much like Zoom, like this, where you can have a two way video, uh, but you can also control each other's um, like screens. So it's a bit like um, like say Google, where you can remote control, remote access. But the good thing about it is you can um, hear what's coming out the door, and and also it also sends MIDI. Um, so you could be, I could be playing the keyboard here like this, and and it could be playing your synth at the other side of there where you're at, which is mind blowing for me. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and there, um, there's, we'll link that in the thingy below in the card so they can yeah. find it. So it looks quite cool. Yeah. The next thing the producer needs to know is number four. Number four would be um, do things in small amounts. When I say this, I mean like. Um, when you're producing, like everyone seems to think, you know, like on an EQ, say, everyone thinks, oh, you just get an EQ around the mid range and then you just push it as high as it'll go, or you'll filter out all the low end. And it's all about small steps, it's all about small things, you know. It's like when you're making a track, you know, one, one or two elements in there, don't put like 20 in there, try and keep mm. everything small. It's all about those small little refinements that make it, you know better because you can imagine if you have uh, i guess it's like anything you know it's like the less is more sort of thing on that yes. one especially for producing you know because it all adds up um, all the little adjustments and alterations and it builds up it's like one way of putting it is like um it's like having makeup on and just putting more makeup on and more makeup on. You're not going to look prettier, are you? It's just going <laughs> to look worse. So, <laughs> not that I put makeup on. Let me clear that one up. <laughs> yeah, you can tell you look weird. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's really cool. Uh, yeah, I, that's amazing. Okay, number five. Number five? Yep. All right. Um, number five would have to be it's all about headspace and physical as well it's not just all about being you know sitting here it's, mm -hmm. it's all about balance and uh with, without going down the the like too preachy route it's you know and make sure you have breaks it's really important to have breaks like do you know do like 45 minutes an hour and like time block then go for a 10 minute break you know a bit like any office job would be uh, but it's really important to let your ears sort of rest and if you're on, you know, you might be really tempted, you'll be on a flow and you'll be like, this track's amazing, it's going to be the next hit. And then next thing you know, you're four hours in, you can't hear anything because you just, your brain's fried, everything's, you've ruined your project because you've been, you know, putting too much in. And so it's really important to take breaks, but also things like go for a walk, you know, go and go out into the fresh air, go and get some, so it's, it's balancing, it's almost like neutralizing you know like when you're mm. when you when you're smelling uh aftershaves and perfumes at the uh counter and they give you some coffee to smell and then you smell back again it's like that little breakaway yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so it's important to do that you know even standing up getting out your chair that kind of physical thing all really helps like your productions which um it's really hard to do that's like the hardest thing ever is to like it's hard to sort of say right i'm gonna have a break because you're into it so much you just mm. kind of like 
huddled over and you're like, oh, getting so into it. Then, <laughs> Giving yourself a hunchback as well. Yeah, yeah. But, and then, and also, if you go away and have a break, at, um, you know, it, it, you could go away, you could say, right, I've done two hours on this track. I'm going to save it, go away, come back, start something new and fresh and do four in a day. And then the day after, come back and go, right, I had the four ideas from yesterday. What we're going to do with those ideas? Which ones, which ones, which seed will flourish the best? You know, which, so we'll pick that track. It's really strong. And then work on that for the next day and things like that. And then you, you haven't wasted a full day either because you could have wasted a full day on the first track and it not be that good. Mm. So that's another good, that's a like a five plus. That's uh, a bonus. A bonus tip. There you go. Let's talk about mastering. Obviously, that's one of your services there. Let's talk yes. about let's talk about your top tips for getting a track ready. Because I'm guessing you kind of people send you tracks in different forms, and I guess you must have an optimum how you can work. I guess the fastest and make the best result for them. Uh, yeah. If it comes in a certain way. Yeah. There's um. Yeah, that's one of the things that's quite um. It's quite an unknown um, thing because when you start out, you sort of learn how to make music, but you, and then you get to a stage where you're just like, oh, I don't really know how to send off for mastering and mm. what to send, and you know, you want you want the best out of your your products because you don't want to send it and it, you just that come back and the mastering engineer sort of say, well, you haven't done this, 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 and this, and it, it does waste a bit of time. So if you um, there's things like um, uh, the sample rate of the track, um, you know, most people work in uh, 44.1 or 48 mm -hmm. and uh that's that's ideal you know but then some people when they start out they don't really understand and they just they might say it to um, really high so the bit rate like um 16 24 so that's kind of the standard um as a, a wav file format so you know you don't want to send any like 192 kilobyte mp3s or anything because you, you're compressing mm -hmm. um so just the, one of the main things is labeling the the file correctly. You wouldn't believe how many people just sort of say send untitled, you know, and it's like how many untitles would you get? So it's really important, you know, put everything in there because when you get that, when you send that track off and it's got all the information and then you get it back with all the information and then sometimes nine times out of 10, I've passed it on to my manager when it's been uh, from mastering and then you'll you you think oh I'll pass it to my manager and you you don't realize that that could then go out into the the, the world that they could then send that to the label and the label end up using that that version with that title and everything on it mm. and uh, it's really important that because you could easily say oh you know new new one with more bass added high end tops down uh, my girlfriend's favorite you know bracket and then it, it ends up being like that on the you know on the, the release mm. um yeah just ensuring there's a, a slight silence at the beginning and the end of the track um uh, mm -hmm. just so there's you know because if you if you accidentally clip off the first bit then it's then it has it's just another process of having to then email back and say look you've missed the first bit off and that that's just simple sort uh, of thing. okay you, you know off the um and as well if there's any like data clicks pops at the end of when it's saved the audio mm. um, and then that gives us excuse me, it gives us room to sort of um, do the fades on the end and the beginning so it doesn't click, you know. And, mm. and then when you put it into record box or um, like engine or anything like that, it, it learns, there's not like a, a four minute gap at the end as well. So um, yeah, just one thing to be mindful of is um, headroom. Headroom means um, how much, um, well, how much headroom you've got in your audio. So if, if you're audio is really hot and it's coming in a, a, it's digitally clipping over zero db there's not much headroom or dynamics for us to um you know to master that to enhance it so it's really important we we sort of advise around like minus six that's mm -hmm. a, about the you know for the for that um and also not to compress or limit not to put any mastering on yourself um so if you've you know if you you might have something on that's unless it's a, an effect for the track um, you know, and you want it to sort of, it might say, for example, sound saturated or um, it might be, you know, have that in it. Um, but if you, if you then, um, you know, squashing the dynamics and if you're limiting it, it's or clipping it, which is where you clip the audio, which is mm. opposite to limiting and compressing, which they compress and push down where the clipper just cuts the audio off when it goes over that threshold. Um yeah, if you're doing any of that, then there's no, you know, there's no headroom really. There's no, we can't, you know, amplify the, 
um, sound. So, did, you just uh, turn, yeah. did I just turn everything down, I guess? Um, yes, but turn it down on the channels. Don't just turn the master down. You know, right. get make your mix the best you can. Mm -hmm. You know, to um, to sort of um, yeah, that that's basically um, yeah, and then just make sure you've got um, it's it's sent over and um, on. You know, don't just um, send it on Facebook or anything. Try and use you know a secure thing like something like Google Drive or one of the you know things with it expires like WeTransfer, and then if you send it across that that person gets it and it's not going to be just floating around on the facebook chat somewhere and things like that or in a group you know yeah, yeah. definitely there's definitely a, a cause for leak it leaks it was a really big traffic as well <laughs> yeah yeah that's it it's uh, one thing as well is uh like when when you make your tracks uh, i've always found as a as an artist that the ones you really like and you think will do well don't do well and the ones you don't really like um, and you think they're all right they normally do better which is so bizarre so sometimes like i've done it before i've sort of said oh i don't really like this one i've just given it to loads of people and then a label signed it and said oh yeah we like it and then you're like oh i'll just give it to like 30 people <laughs> <laughs> that's that's something to be mindful of just out of experience keep you keep your tracks to yourself yeah until, until, until it's signed <laughs> so yes would you right. advise testing the tracks out before you master them uh, yes, if you if you're confident and uh, an ability to get it to a standard where you you know you know that it's going to sound like a, we what we call a DJ master where mm -hmm. it's like a self master, um, that's that's quite important. If you've got that, you know, if you're a resident or you've got a, a regular um, uh, gig somewhere or you've got a good sound system uh, in a club, you can kind of uh, get a good feel of it because um, sometimes you'll be surprised that tracks that you listen to in your studio or you've made. That you think, oh, this is, you know, this is okay. And then you play it out loud on a, a club system and it really slams. It's like, whoa, this is this is a lot, you know, a lot better than I thought. Or mm. you, you you think it's great and you play it out and you're like, oh, actually, the bass isn't moving right with the kick or this, that, the other. So you have to like go. So it's always good to sort of test it out a bit and then make sure you're happy with the, uh, your finished um track before you send it for mastering because you know it's one it's it's cheaper for you because you don't want to get like then pay to have it remastered because you thought you forgot to put like a little clap in or a triangle or something you yeah, know yeah, yeah. You get what i'm saying it's like yeah 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 so it's, it is good to sort of test them out in the club and then think right you know maybe the track was a bit too long in those areas i need to work on the arrangement uh, mm -hmm. and then just make sure it's 100 percent, and then you and then you can draw a line under it and say right i'm happy with that now send it off for mastering. Do you still do the do you still do the car test? The car test, yeah, yeah. The car test, good. It's um, but the the only problem with the car test is sometimes it's it's like most um, devices. Sometimes it's it can be it can be good, but also it can be bad because if there's if there's one little thing that you don't agree with, then you kind of have to go back and mm. think, and then you end up over changing everything and and it's like and you have to think to yourself right where am i where am i ever going to be djing in a car <laughs> <laughs> or am i making this for a club because a lot of my own personal music i write it's it's very club orientated you know it, there's, mm. there's a lot of space in it and the the because I'm, I'm thinking the subs are just going to be going forwards and backwards and it's got to have that like that body whereas if you played in a in a car or if you played on something smaller like a, an iphone you'd be you wouldn't really hear a lot of the the lower end because it's it's not in the, the the area so it just depends where you want it to be and what you know if it was like a, a mainstream song that you want on streaming yeah yeah the car the you know the uh, bluetooth speaker the phone is it because it's because it's, it's a shit set basically it's a shit of sound and you just want to make sound good on the shit shitter is that what the, what the point of it <laughs> well yeah well it's just the just different frequency ranges in the in the um through the speakers so like a, a car a car speaker might not go like less than sort of like well in the modern cars are amazing to be honest some of the modern cars are really good but like say on a, a on like a phone or something you're not going to get the reflex of the of the of the speaker in a tiny phone so you're not going to hear that detail you know in the in the bottom end so uh, that's that's all it is really it's just so that you know it, it's op optimized for you know all different where it's going to go you know for streaming for yes so. and then fine uh, i guess finally in this section I noticed that you help a lot of producers in the studio as well. Uh, and I wanted to sort of ask your tips for getting for finishing tracks. I know a lot of people struggle to finish tracks. 
Yeah. And they get them to 85% maybe and then don't know what to do next. What is your advice for that? Yeah, that's um, that's an interesting one because, yeah, what I've found myself personally, I've always pushed myself to um, to finish tracks because it's so – if you keep just starting tracks all the time and just mm-hmm. – you put, save it, put it in a folder, save it, put it in a folder, you never get to like, even get to 85%. You, as, a, as a producer, you, you get used to starting tracks and that's the exciting bit. That's the bit that thrills you. But the, it's more exciting when you finish the track, but you'd never get to that stage because you just keep starting it. So what I try and do is I always try and finish them. Even if I'm like, I'm like, that's it. I'm done. That track's finished. I might come back to it like three months later and change it and make it into something else or make it finish it off but at the time just get used to starting them uh i'm um, sorry get used to finishing them um but yeah to what i do is i also step away i'll leave i'll write a track and then i'll leave it for like a week um some people don't leave it a couple of days but i leave it a week and then i'll come back to it again and it's um that really helps because um you know you can get too um, caught up in it one thing i, I would say is um I, I wouldn't try and look look to, for other people to sort of give you the give the the right answers because I've found that um, if I take my tracks and I, get, I only give it to a select few people now because I learned early on that if I was to give my tracks to certain people they would have their own personal preference and opinion of the music mm. they would tell me that then I would go back and then think oh well it needs changing this ever so like um, yeah again I'm not sort of trying to self advertise or anything because um, but pit going to um, people like that are offering um, sort of one-to-one tuition and things like that. They're really good because they can show you alternative ways of how to finish. Mm. So they can say, Oh, well, why don't you try this? If you, if you want, you know, have a reference track or reference style. So I want to, you know, you want, you track to sound like this, analyze what they did in their track and say to say to the mentor, say, how did they get that sound to do that? I want to do that in my track to make it sound, you know, more like mm. that. And that's the way you learn because by doing that, you, you sort of, you're analyzing that the mentor will go, right, they, they use this on it and they use these plugins to get it to do that, but you have to do it in this style or way or, mm. and, and with like anything, there's no rules. It's just, um, it's just getting from, you know, A to B, as long as it sounds good, it is good. So that's, that's how I'd, I'd finish. I'd, you know, I'd, I'd look at um, getting finished. I'm just trying to think if there's anything I can add to, if you so say for example you get halfway through your track and mm. um, you get stuck, um, what I would do is I would go away, come back, and I'd look at it and I'd think, right, which elements can I, I drag over there, which are different, which you know, and I would I would take things and put them not in a necessarily right place, and by happy accidents that's how you make you know like for example one of my tracks I um i'd made it up to a point and then i went to duplicate and move it across and i didn't select a few of the channels so when i moved it across all all the audio was missing but i'd and then i played the audio that the the select tracks that were together and just because of the 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 elements that were there together were were so irregular that you just wouldn't pick them together but when it played it sounded amazing and i was like (laughs) And so I realized that, that it was my half my percussion that was ruining the track. It was like less is more again. And yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that went that went on to get to on signed to um, Idris Elba's label, Seven Wallace. And it was like, and I, every time I hear that track, I think half of that I deleted. And it, you know, so it was it was almost like a happy accident, you know, especially with the transitions when you're working in. Um, with a very, it's very monotonous block form repetitive is dance music especially so you're working in these blocks where um, as humans we look at these blocks and we say we'll move that there move that there and then it becomes it becomes stale and boring because you need that like it needs to be broken up a little bit so take you know take a section instead of doing it in blocks do it like bricks where there's one like that you know obviously if it works um, if you've got some rises or some leads or synths don't you know don't put everything on the straight rigid things because otherwise it's going to sound rigid you know mm. try moving things like cut bits off just experiment and you'll come up with something that you like take you know take a bit of your um, a bit of your track elements go to the end of the project where there's a load of space just move things around try different weird things you know you won't affect your project because it's there mm. but just try different things with your audio or so to say and that kind of and then you'll come up with something that you're like oh i could use that tiny little fill there and put that back in my track and mm. then 
next thing you know you've come up with a melody or hook that you would never come up with because it was not on grid and then yeah. you've got your, you know it continues so hopefully that's helped some of you that's there. amazing thank you man that's really cool yeah um and then finally do you want to talk about go up and music and what's going on yeah yeah well um yeah, go up. Um, I was I was about to do a US tour and do Miami and everything, uh, but yeah, that was uh, that was quickly postponed because of the COVID stuff. So yes. uh, yeah, so I'm just um, just I, I use I, I work my, my work balance is go up and production and teaching and I work with um, brands like Sonic Academy and different other like loop masters i've just finished a sample pack for them as go up and mm -hmm. different you know different um stuff like that but i i am um, i'm i'm just right i'm always writing tracks but uh when you get to a certain level what i i have to think is i can't just write average underground uh rolling tracks that don't really do anything you have to uh, you think right when you put a track out you want people to go yeah that's that's you know that's the gop sound Mm. It's like, oh, that's, you know, so, so now what I do is I tend to spend a little bit longer just formulating the uh, idea or I just, you know, um, I, I'll, when I'm inspired, I'll, I'll jump in the studio and do it that way, you know, and I, th I find that a lot easier than trying to force something out. So, but yeah, so at the moment I'm just, uh, I'm on lockdown like everyone else. So I'm just, <laughs> uh, just working on that. And then and another thing is I'm always learning, you know, I'm always reading into um, different doors and, um, I'm speaking to different people about, you know, just advancing my knowledge on um, production because you can you can never stop. There's always something new to learn or something, you know. I'm, I use uh, Logic, Ableton Live. They're my main two. Mm -hmm. But um, again, it's like, you know, I want, I've been looking at Fruity Loops because I've been looking at FL Studio and I'm like, that's really cool. There's some really good features in it and just learning. So then if anyone ever says to me, you know, what what how how do you do this? I can say, oh well, the audio routing in FL does it this way differently to Cubase mm. Logic or Live. So yeah, that's kind of like what I've been doing, just being a, being a bit of a, a nerd. That's cool. Yeah, so. yeah I, 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 FL Studio is pretty. Good. I know some people that have released on big labels with their making tracks in yeah. FL Studio, so yeah. it's yeah. good. That's it. No, it doesn't matter what you what you make it on. You know, I know I know people that still just only use hardware. But it takes them a long time. <laughs> but but yeah, that's that's a you know a league in itself. So, but yeah, it's um, yeah, it's all it's all fun. It's all fun. It's something I set out to do when I was sixteen. I was like, let's just buy stuff from eBay and plug it in and make noises and flashing lights and see what happens. And yeah, you know. <laughs> I love that. Years later, I'm still still doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Happy as Larry. Great. That's, that's wicked. Yeah. Cool, man. That was really cool. Uh, thank yeah. you for joining me. Um, I hope we covered everything you wanted to cover. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been fun, man. It's been I've learned loads. Yeah. And I'll see you soon. Yeah, thanks. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to hug next time we see each other. Yeah, or at so, least elbow bump. Yeah, el elbow. Yeah. yeah elbow bumps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stay safe, man. Thanks you for having too, me. Man. You too, man. See you soon. I hope you found that useful. I hope you got loads out of it. I know I, I learned loads out of it chatting to, chatting to him. Uh, if you did, please consider subscribing to his channel. Uh, give this video a like. It really helps the growth of the video. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye-bye.